Good afternoon, folks. Uh, we welcome you to our third in this um, fantastic series in the season of COVID-19. Um, and I just want to respond with a few, um, a few folks that had shared some information with me about how these, these brief videos have impacted them. A friend of our community sent an email and said, I'm impressed with your ability to adapt your ministry to these perilous times. You're correct in stating that this is a time when we especially need each other. I detected some influence from your reading Revolutionary Love by Rabbi Michael Lerner, um, just sharing kind of what other faith communities and other faith, faith leaders would say. And this individual goes on to say, I think that we have an opportunity as a faith community to join the movement for a new bottom line. I thought that was a very interesting, interesting way to put it, a new bottom line where we judge the success of every sector, system, and institution of our society based not on the old bottom line of whether they maximize money, profit, and power, but instead by the extent to which they maximize love and care, kindness and generosity, empathy and compassion, social, economic, and environmental justice, peace, nonviolence, and the protection of the life support system of our planet. And so I thought this individual had a beautiful way of framing and reframing the time in which we're living and the importance of, of a new bottom line, like what's really critical in our relationships, what's really critical in our systems, what's really critical um, for our humanity, to live fully into our humanity and to become more humane. And really looking at the new bottom line as being does it maximize love, maximize love and caring and compassion and mercy and grace and sharing? Because I think in this time right now, we're watching people and hearing stories of people um, hoarding. Um, somebody today shared with me that they have plenty of food um, for probably the next few months for a family of four, right? So how do, we, how do we find places where we share what we have and we share our resources, especially as we're gonna see a lot of individuals um, they're going to be losing their jobs or laid off for a time. I heard a news story today that, <clears throat> and I believe this was in New Jersey or New York, it was on the East Coast, but where individuals went to a restaurant um, and left tips of the upwards of $2,000 to $5,000 um, for the staff um, to support the people because they're going to be laid off, right? And they're going to be industry and the food industry workers that are really not going to have a source of income. So I think some of those are really beautiful ways to our, for us to express our compassion and potentially what we might call our new bottom line, our new way of being, new way of living in our world and in our culture. And I think what's interesting is I was doing a little bit of research and I've been curious how this will change. This event will change us and change our world and our world viewpoint and change our bottom line. But it takes, I believe, 100 days and I think Yvonne shared this with me too, 100 days to really change behavior. And if this goes on for two, three, four months, how will this change our behavior? And will it change our behavior for the good that we're more compassionate, more caring, that we have the ability to share and be more humane? So those are just a few thoughts. But today I wanted to have an opportunity um, for you to hear a different voice than just my voice. Um, Yvonne Harrison is our moderator of light. Uh, which is our social justice and outreach into the world. And she also works in the healthcare industry. And so she's going to share a little bit from her perspective. I'm going to ask her a few questions. Um, so Yvonne, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Um, happy to have you here. And today we're actually in our beautiful sanctuary here at First Church. And we lit our candles. And we also have a, one of my favorite Bible verses, Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God, um, from Micah. So Yvonne, as somebody who works very diligently um, in the arena of justice, um, of social justice and compassion and mercy. Um, what are some of your reflections at this time of COVID-19 and how we are to live into our true authentic humanity and our divinity? Oh, an easy question to start with, Pastor James. Why not? Thank you so much, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. I'll drink um, coffee while you're talking. Well, well I'll be pondering. Um, so how do we live? How do we live into this new era? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, especially from a, a social justice perspective, a perspective of, of how do we how do we hold the light, and then share the light. I think what is incredibly helpful for me is being in the present, 
this is a beautiful, sweet moment. Being in the sanctuary with Grace, with you, with the dogs, with some coffee on a rainy morning in Phoenix. This is, mm. this is to be treasured, right? This is, and so it's all about, for me, it's all about being in the here and now and, and realizing how much I truly, truly have and to be able to say, you know what, I get to go home to a house that I love, to a neighborhood that I love. I have music that I can enjoy, I have candles, I have books. I mean, it's certainly not punishment to be constricted to my home. I have so very much and I think it really causes me to focus in on that. And then conversely, to be able to say, and how much do I truly need? How much do I truly need? I'm only gonna buy one bottle of shampoo because you know what? There's others that need more. And I think when it comes to social justice, it speaks to me to be able to say, oh, do I need to take, I do take a shower every day, but do I need to? How many people can't do that? We have this opportunity to reframe where we're at. And I, and I think, and I'm gonna push back a little bit on the word change, and I'm gonna push back a little bit on the word used yesterday, reboot, because this is really about transformation. If I reboot my computer, it just comes up as it was. I, don't, I think it is a mistake that if we say this is a time to reboot it's, it's, or to change, we have to take this to be transformed or we will continually be challenged. We have to say, no, this is, we, this is a birthing. This is a new beginning. This is an opportunity to move in a new way and it's up to us to seize it. And we have so many resources. I mean, just being able to broadcast this over the internet, to be able to check on people with my cell phone, to be able, I mean, there's just, to order online from Amazon, to have Safeway deliver, to be, I mean, we are so rich, and yet we're off of viewing this as a time of lack. This is a time for spiritual development and enhancement, and to be able to say, how am I, how do I do take care of my neighbor? What do I need? What is, what is just, what is fair? And you know, I agree, it's not just a reboot, it's really a transformation. And how do, we, how do we understand faith and community in the midst of kind of our current, I, wouldn't want to, I would call it a crisis, but the current, the current situation and scenario we've been given. I think in many ways, the church, faith community um, has lost so much influence in culture, partly because the faith community hasn't been willing to shift and move and adapt to the culture and now in a way, um, I'm wondering, and somebody shared with me yesterday, um, at a time when people really need faith, as you express how important your faith is, when pe people need faith and they need an understanding of something outside themselves or God or divine energy, um, whatever you may, may, whatever name you may give to that God, churches are closed, right? Places of worship are closed. Um, our doors are shut. So how do we figure out um, as faith community to live differently um, and to live in the world and be the hands and feet in the world, the light, because the church for so long has cloistered itself down in buildings and, and, it, and we're dying inside buildings um, because we're not out in the community doing the work of God in the world. And so I think it's really interesting that you share that from your perspective. Um, and since you work in the healthcare industry, is there anything you want to share? Um, from your your work in the healthcare industry as a as a wash your hands wash your hands wash your hands very important I think it's um, and you don't you don't in the work you do if you want to disclose that um, as far as physical therapy correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't have an opportunity you don't really have a chance to distance yourself right um, because you're hands on and We're you're doing that hands on work and I know I'm a member of a massage therapy and they're no longer doing massages right because it's hands on but in this situation in this healthcare world well in general right you don't really have an opportunity so yeah. your hands on and I and I think it because um, we were teasing. I mean, certainly during this this time. I mean, laughter is so critically important. Very important. And so, one of the one of the patients we were in yesterday was asking her therapist, saying, "So, what do you think? Are you going to go with this doing telemedicine?" And he's like, "Well, my wife would like that, but I don't know. How do you think it works?" She's like, "Oh no, you can't do that. Who's going to help? You know, I need to have my back manipulated. I need I need to be this touch, and, and we all need touch." And I think that people that live alone or are isolated, I mean, that can, that's just um, 
devastating. You know, what is, and we've, years ago we talked about what's safe touch. Now this is a whole different construct. So how do we have that? And how yeah. do we feel nurtured in that? And like I was, I was sharing with you, I do have a dog and I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's time to get another dog. You know, maybe people that are living alone, because there's opportunities to foster because pets are being dropped off and their staffs are reducing. I mean, there's just, there's so many opportunities in this day and age. I'm sorry, we went off healthcare, sorry about that. But there's so many opportunities to be a hero and to be able to yeah. say, you know what, I don't have much, but what can I do? And I think, I, I find it very interesting, many patients, not many patients, maybe 50% <clears throat> of my regular patients have canceled. Um, and we all know everything on this is day to day. Who knows what I'll find when I'm going this afternoon. Um, but it's people that they, they have the right to choose how they want to move forward. And so I would say yesterday, all the patients that I saw were immunocompromised in some way, yet they chose to come. And so, I mean, part of it knows that we provide a safe space, and part of it is saying that they feel the, they feel the value of coming is greater than the risk. So I think in this time of, of not having control, to give people as much control as they have. They have to have make informed, it has to be informed consent, and certainly we do things, that, probably the thing that's most different from what we're doing is all patients are queried. You know, have yeah. you been out of the country? Have you had a cough or fever? And, that, and if they report that they have, then they're isolated so they don't contaminate the general population or infect. But otherwise, you know, once you proof those questions, and is it, I mean, we will, when we look back in history, could we have done more? Was this the right thing to do? we'll have different answers because you can always Monday more to quarterback, but we're right. doing the best we can with right. what we have. And there's never anything that is absolute, it's all multidimensional. And, and it's not, in my opinion, it's not black or white. I mean, it's, there is a lot of right. shades of gray. In well, there. it's interesting that you brought up the point, or maybe I brought up the point, somebody brought up the point um, <clears throat> about touch, right? And the significance mm -hmm. of touch and that everybody needs touch. And I think honestly, as we were considering, um, suspending worship for the next couple of weeks at least is for some people um, and we're we're a rather um, gregarious community of faith when we share the peace there'll be people that'll hug right and for some people this is the most significant touch or human contact they have during the week and i think it's really important for us again to think about how do we touch others if we can't touch others how do we touch them with a phone call with words of compassion and love, and maybe it's the time to really be thinking about how do we share, how do we share our love, how do we share gratitude? You know, I'm finding myself actually um, being a little bit more forthright with people about I really care about you, thank you so much. You know, you've made a difference in my life. Your presence is important, um, and and showing and expressing love maybe with words that sometimes I'm hesitant to do, because sometimes sharing our, our, our love with others or what we appreciate about others can be uncomfortable, right, with words. And so maybe sometime in, instead we touch them or we put our hand on their shoulder. So I think it's, it's calling us to be different and it's calling us, I agree, not just change and not just rebooting, but transforming who we are and how we live with each other and how we relate to each other. I think that's critical. It's an opportunity, right? It's up to us. Otherwise, we get to we get to practice again if we don't if we don't kind of grow with this. And interesting that humanity goes through these cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Like for us, we've been talking about this with younger people and people our age. They've never really experienced anything like this before. This mm -hmm. is something new. Eh, we've had flus, we've had viruses, um, we had 9/11, um, and, and we've experienced a variety of of challenges for humanity. Um, but this is one that feels so big and so global um, and so threatening, you know, that it's, yeah, it's going to change us and it's got to change the way we look at the world and, and again, transform us. Because I think at, at these opportunities in human history, we have opportunities to be transformed, to evolve, to change, right? Um, in ways that are really powerful. Do we get that message? Are we gonna get that message? And are we gonna get that message really as faith communities too? Are we gonna look at ourselves and say, hey, we've been stuck in the 1950s and 60s? And I have kind of a theory and a philosophy that most denominations, churches, faith communities, or even religious traditions 
even outside of the Christian faith, that we're kind of stuck in the era in which we, we were given birth or we were birthed, right? And so with the United Church of Christ, we were kind of rebirthed in 1957. Are we stuck in 57? Are we going to be relevant in 2020 and 2021 and 25, right? And so how do we look at that differently? Um, and how do we say the church, faith, humanity continues to evolve and continues to be transformed? Because that's really what, what evolution is about. It's about transforming. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> you didn't quite ask. Well, I don't think I answered your question. When I, well, I know I didn't answer your question. Um, with regard to in physical therapy practice, we were kidding around that maybe we could do Reiki, you know, because you don't touch people through the, but it, 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 it's, it's not there. And what I've found in my community is in looking at touch, what I find beautiful, I found my stuff beautiful. And I guess I would say I, I have reinstituted my practice of gratitude to be able to say, what am I grateful for this day? Because we know whatever we pay attention to will grow bigger in our life. So I right. can say, Oh, I don't know. I don't know if the, all those 10 rolls of toilet paper are going to last me long enough. I can say, I can be fearful. I can say, you know what? I'm grateful I have toilet paper today. I'm grateful, um, you know, that, that I take my dog for a walk and the leash is just long enough for social distancing. So I connect with that person as they pet the dog and we can chat and we're like, we're still distant. I see my neighborhood. I see people out walking, you know, of all ages. And it's like, because um, people are more present, isn't it nice that we talk here, we talk in this church about beloved community, but with this opportunity, with this the crisis, this is the pandemic, it gives us an opportunity to expand our beloved community and see it differently and to be more inclusive because we find, you know, truly what the le how we treat the least of us. And we know those, those folks, because of how marginalized and how at risk they are because of lack of housing or health care or food or whatever, they also can very much impact us because they have, they, they're more at risk and how we're all on this big boat together. And so we're not, one is not gonna rise and another fall. We're all going together. Well, I think we're about at the end of our time. I'm sure we've... Um, <laughs> are we? Yes. And, and, I, and I wanna say to folks that may be listening or watching I was gonna tune out already. No, if you haven't tuned out already because of our, our babaliciousness, um, <laughs> that, you know, you know, if you've got a spare, if, you, if you've got, if somebody's on a toilet paper, give them a roll of toilet paper, right? I mean, to me, those are just the basic necessities, the things that we do as human beings and that we share. And I have to say, yeah. I think out of this, I would love for people to be able to take, to write in and tell us why toilet paper is so important to them. Yes. I mean, what the, what the, I mean, not the obvious reasons. I know what toilet like, paper is used for. why is it for, toilet paper? But it's not gonna save us from COVID-19. Right. So what, what is that basic necessity about toilet paper because there's something right. very real about that right. and what is the um i would love i mean i've started keeping a journal because every day is different to be yeah. able to see and i think yeah. this is truly a momentous time to be able yeah. to see i i would challenge us that gives us a chance to yeah. go in so. to 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 write down and reflect on what's been really life-giving during this time what's been awakenings and awarenesses what's really beginning to transform you. And what helps you get through, yeah, right? What, what's helping you get through? How are people helping you get through? And, and maybe what are some of the really difficulties that you're, you're finding in, in this time? Um, and just journal and take time to, to reflect. And I think in, in the coming uh, week, we have a couple of different individuals. Dr. Boring, who's a philosopher, um, will be sharing a bit with us, somebody from the Jewish community. We're hopefully gonna be able to secure somebody from the Islamic um, or, or Hindu community um, to reflect, because I think it's really, a, it's really a time for us to come together and hear each other's perspectives. And I really thank Yvonne for sharing from her perspective. Um, she's been a real mover and shaker in our community here and really grateful for her presence. But let's all be movers and shakers out there, even though we're isolated and we're separated right now and we're social distancing, but, but find ways to connect and find ways to share love. And if that means a roll of toilet paper, it means a roll of toilet paper. Um, or maybe a piece of cake or a cupcake, you know, whatever, whatever it is that we can, we can share with each other. So just be at peace uh, again tomorrow. 
Um, I think uh, we probably will not be filming, but we'll send something out um, hard copy, the good old way email. Um, and we just ask um, that you be safe. Um, and again, we offer a sanctuary here. I know today it's been very interesting. Um, Joshua Tree has been distributing food to people that are HIV positive. Um, and we've been distributing lunches for homeless folks and people experiencing economic insecurity out our office door. Um, Gompers is here cleaning. Um, there are individuals that are otherly able that come and clean our space um, as an issue of justice. So there's been activity here, um, but of course we're doing it at a safe distance and we ask that you would send us good energy as we send you good energy. So have a great day. Thank you.